and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike, welcome. Welcome all, I am Mullet Mike, bringing you Creepy Gaming. If you've been following the series for the last couple of weeks, then you know I recently received a disc entitled Cliche.exe. Anyways, I uh, recently opened it up and checked it out, and really it was just a bunch of creepypasta hacks that I've already reviewed. But one that was on there that I have not was the infamous Mario Creepypasta. Special sticky shout out to all these fine folks right here. Thank you very much. Thank you for those suggestions. Now besides just reviewing this Creepypasta, I'm also going to share my thoughts and theories as to what makes Mario so creepy. Alright, so sit back and relax as we're about to cover the Creepypasta simply known as Mario. So whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So what, every time I go into extreme close-up, we're gonna get that really weird, crazy music cue? No, 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 let's put this out to the test. Titty Springs. Turn the lights down, volume most we turn in for Creepy Gaming. the most recognizable character in video game history, Mario has been the subject of many theories, debates, and creepypastas. What is it about this mustachioed plumber in red that makes his stories and easter eggs so creepy? Maybe it's the fact that the character is as innocent as he is. If you look at the attributes of Mario's character, he is your typical good guy. He's brave, fearless, has no real bad intentions, he is a loyal companion and brother, he never complains no matter how repetitive his task may be. Mario does not have the downfalls of typical human nature that we can all fall victim of. So again I ask, what is it about Mario that makes these creepypastas and theories stand out more than a typical scary video game story? I've obviously been giving it a lot of thought, and the only real answer that comes to mind is that the character of Mario has played a big part in most of our childhoods. That being said, when we hear something creepy related to Mario, it doesn't just rattle our senses, but coincidentally attacks our childhoods as well. The same can be said about Lost Episode Creepypastas. What does Suicide Mouse, The Rugrats Theory, and Squidward's Suicide all have in common? They are all figures that you may have watched as a kid. SpongeBob, Mickey Mouse, and The Rugrats are all innocent characters for the most part, causing a more intense reaction to these twisted tales that we may have read. Now, I've said it before, if a video game is meant to be scary and intended for mature audiences, then we get what we pay for. But if it's a family oriented title, then it comes across that much more unexpected. Now there is no shortage of Mario creepypastas. There's a couple for Super Mario 64, there's Super Mario Sunshine, Mario Kart Wii, Hotel Mario the 13th Hotel, but the one I'd like to focus on is simply titled Mario. Starting on the website SMW Central, this creepypasta seems to be one of the more popular. It was first posted in the site's forums in December of 2010. It's an older creepypasta, but because of the overwhelming demand from the creepy community, I feel like it belongs in the season of highly requested episodes. A user by the name of Adam posted what he claimed to be a true story. Adam states that after searching through the Hacks Waiting to be Moderated section, he finds a strange entry. After downloading, he noticed that this Mario hack came with a jumbled text document. The only recognizable text was the repeated phrase, Find Me. 
When starting the ROM, it appears to be almost identical to Super Mario World. Once you start the game, though, you will begin to see a few subtle changes. For starters, the title screen just says Mario. Nothing too creepy about that. But once you start the game, you'll notice that the in-game text boxes begin to reveal a dark story. The first text box encountered says the following. Look closely to the last line. Mario is at it again. Adam interpreted this as Mario being the antagonist of this particular story rather than the protagonist. He first went to what used to be known as Yoshi's house in the original game. When he hit the advice box, all that popped up was a series of binary codes signed by Yoshi. According to Adam, it said Notepad. As he continued to play, he noticed that the first stage was renamed. Rather than saying Yoshi's Island 1, like it said in Super Mario World, it now stated, Never Come Back. When he started the level, he quickly noticed that there was no music as well as no enemies. Throughout the course of the game, the advice boxes say such phrases as, I hate you, this is the selfish way out, and even, don't you think you've caused enough trouble? It really begins to get good after Adam faces the first boss, Iggy. In Super Mario World, this would be where the cutscene, if you'd even call it that, shows Mario rescuing the egg from the castle. Instead of the usual uplifting message, Adam was treated to this. The strange message reads like it was a coroner's report giving grisly detail as to what happened to victim number one. He questioned who this victim was. Was it Princess Peach? Or was it a real victim from our world? The story continues on with more strange text and level designs. In the final level of this ROM, Mario is taken to a small room with a pit and brick wall. With nowhere else to go, Adam guides Mario through the pit only to find out that there is really an unseen floor underneath. He tried pressing the down button in multiple places until he finally found a hidden pipe. Adam waited for the next level but it didn't progress any further. Just a blank screen. That was it. That was the end. Adam has theories as to what this abrupt ending meant. This is a direct quote from his post. This was the video game representation of death, a crash. Mario had died. After playing, I think I finally understand what was happening. I believe Mario was atoning for his actions eventually being plummeted into a hell that looked exactly like Yoshi's Island, where he was lost to the grip of death forever. Now, as is, this is a pretty interesting creepypasta. But that's not all. It really kicks it up a notch and takes it to a whole new level of fuckery. Another forum user remembered the strange text document that accompanied the hat. The only eligible text was Find Me and that's exactly what this user did. They realized that this jumbled text was really code for a JPEG header. After tweaking around with it for a bit, this image was soon discovered. Okay, I've tried to keep this review tame, but this is my breaking point. What in the bloody teetotaling blue hell on an ice cream fuck bar in shit stick Sunday is this all about? Fuck you, fuck her, fuck him, fuck this. Who's got two thumbs and not gonna sleep tonight? This guy. This image is fucked up. It's just fuck. Okay, okay, no. no I'm, I'm better now, I'm better. Just... Just had to release the beast, season one style. So, what is this creepy image all about? Is this the victim that was mentioned after the first castle boss? Look closely, it matches the description. This definitely takes the creepypasta in a darker direction. It was a nice callback. After thoroughly soiling my best pair of khakis, I decided to do a little research. 
I wanted to know more about this Adam guy. I had a couple of questions for him. I looked up his profile on the website. Apparently, he has been a member for quite some time and has kept himself busy with other projects. In his profile summary, I found a link to his YouTube channel. I decided to reach out to him and see if he had any comment regarding the story. And believe it or not, Adam actually responded. It's not every day when you get to talk to the author of such a popular creepypasta. So I didn't hesitate. I asked him the tough questions on the record. I asked him if it was real or just a fabricated story. I also asked if he was the real creator of the hack. This is what he had to say. The story itself is real and so is the hack that I uploaded to my file bin. I really found it and played it. And then I wrote about it in the threads. My reactions were genuine. Apparently there have been different versions of his creepypasta passed around that involve strange occurrences with his computer. This is what he had to say in regards to that. What isn't real is the shit about the lights flickering and my monitor displaying unsettling images. That never happened, and I don't know where it came from, but I sure didn't write it. He went on to say, Nothing was staged. The hack creator and I had no prior interaction, though we did meet some time afterwards. He's a relatively normal person, nothing really creepy about him. To be honest with you, I never expected the story to get this popular. It was mostly a spur of the moment thing that I decided to do before I finished playing through the hack. So what it sounds like to me is that Adam genuinely played a ROM hack that he had no part of creating. He validates his claims by stating that he does in fact know the creator and he's just your typical guy. This might take away from the overall mystique of the story now knowing that this ROM hack didn't just magically appear out of nowhere, but it does give Adam a little more credit. I see where he's coming from. This was just a creepy hack he played. There's nothing supernatural about that. He decided to share it with people in the forum thread to make for an entertaining story, not thinking it would turn into this overblown, passed around creepypasta. So there you have it. The true story behind the Mario Creepypasta. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Creepy Gaming. Be sure to like and favorite. It really helps me out, guys. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at the Creepy Paddle at X Mullet Mike X. I think that's going to do it for me today, guys. I am Mullet Mike with a stick in the house saying keep it stay creepy. Thanks for watching. Peace.